family mode. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our November edition of Learn Pill Online. My name is Lisa McGonigal, and I'm delighted to see so many of you joining us online this morning. We have the FA, the Conservation Volunteers, Warwickshire County Council, and much more. I must say, it's been one of our most popular learning hours so far. I don't know if that's off the back of Learning Pill Live and Paul and Lindsay's successful session there. Um, so and we're all set to go. So I just want to make sure from an audio point of view that all our attendees can hear us okay. So you'll see a small orange hand beside your name. If you just raise that and let us know that you can hear us. Great stuff. Brilliant. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks, Gail. Fantastic. So today's webinar will explore um, how to create awesome e-learning. And joining me this morning is Learning Pool's Head of Content, Lindsay Code, Head of Graphics, Paul Cromlish, and our Adapt Learning Design Expert, Cara McComey. This morning's session should last approximately 45, 50 minutes. And there will be an opportunity for you to interact with us throughout the session. There'll be a couple of quick polls, for example, for you to cast your vote. Um, and down the right-hand side of the control panel, you'll see a questions box too. If you could just pop your questions on there, and we'll try our best to answer those online. So, well, let's kick things off. I'm just going to launch a, a, one of those polls to get a feel for how people feel about creating content with ADAPT. So maybe it's all new to you. You feel as if you're progressing well on your ADAPT journey, or you're at the stage now, 18 months down the line, that you're pretty confident, but of course you're keen to learn more as ADAPT learning develops. Great stuff. I'll just give you another 10 seconds or so. Interesting results, Lindsay and Paul. What we have is just over. Yeah. Yep. Feel free, Lindsay. That's okay. As we say, it looks like for about 50% of you um, looking at Adapt it is quite new. That's probably. Um, just the way things are at the moment because obviously Adapt is still relatively new to the market and to our customers. So hopefully uh, today's webinar will kind of help you on that journey. I'm also going to cover very briefly some of the basics at the beginning, so hopefully that will help you get up to speed quite quickly. And for those of you that are progressing well and already quite confident, um, hopefully so this will just help you kind of polish your um, Adapt modules and just give them that extra little edge that kind of really makes them look great to your learners. So. Brilliant. Great stuff. Paul, have you anything to add? No, I think that's fine. Yeah, that's well, well. Thank you, Nancy. So I'm going to pop you over to Lindsay now. That should be you, Lindsay. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Hopefully everyone can see my, my screen. Can you just confirm that, Lisa? Um, not not yet. We just see the main the main screen. Let me see. That's it. That better? Brilliant. Thank you. Perfect. I think I've forgotten to press a button, so that's fine. <laughs> it normally pops up asking me. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Um, it's great to have so many of you with us. Um, as I just said, I'm going to do a quick introduction because we're aware that although some of you have been using ADAPT and know it quite well, there's probably some of you um, on this webinar as well that it's all very new to. So I'm just going to cover a few basics just for a few minutes. So hopefully those of you that have heard it before, it won't, um, won't keep you too long. But so ADAPT is obviously um, an e-learning content builder um, and the reason it's called adapt is because it um, it adapts to the device that you're using so the code behind it is always the same so you only have to create one version of the course um, what adapt then does is looks at the screen size of the device that you're viewing it on and it reconfigures the layout so that it works on the device that you're using okay So there are two parts to ADAPT. The first one, which as you can see there looks pretty scary, is the framework. That's the open source code um, that is kind of sits behind the builder. The bit that um, 
you will see the most of is this uh, is the adapt builder itself um, so that's kind of an easy to use interface that allows you to edit that code that sits behind it um, one of the things we know that people um, have found a little bit difficult when moving from um, more traditional authoring tools that work on the click next and have a very specific page is some of the structure stuff and some of the terminology so I'm just going to quickly run through um, some of that now which will help when you get to Paul's bit and he's talking about kind of how you customize your module and how you can make it look different and suitable for your brand and things. So we have the page. Um, <clears throat> As most of you are probably aware, that works on long scrolling pages rather than clicking next. So you have a number of pages. You have your menu, which is your kind of top level one, and under that you then have a number of pages. That's probably what we used to refer to as our sections within a module, basically. So that's what your pages are. But you'll see that, as I said, when Paul starts going through a um, start going through this in a bit more detail. Beneath the page, we have a number of um, basically, that kind of builds up to create this long scrolling page. The first one of those is your article. Um, and then within your article, you have your blocks. And then within there, you have your components. So it's A, B, C. So article is your top level, then your blocks, and then your components. The way it works is that you need an article to be a holder for your blocks. Um, so your blocks are the blue ones there. And you need a block to be a holder for your components, basically. Um, blocks can have components side by side, um, or they can just have one that goes the full width. But they can only have one um, kind of vertical bit in there. Um, <clears throat> If you want to then add um, more components, you need to add more blocks basically within your article. Okay, this is quite a good way of looking at the structure of it. The beauty of this is that it means that you can structure your pages and lay your pages out however you want to basically. So you're going to see here rather than being <coughs> forced to have something whole page or to have something left or right, you can actually just bring it all together and make it into something that really works for your content. Okay, so I, hopefully that's given you a bit of background to kind of how that works, and I'm now going to hand over to Paul so he can start talking to you um, about how to make your e-learning modules look amazing. That's great. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, you should be able to see my screen shortly. Yeah, we can. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, okay, um, so anybody who was at Learning Pool Live will, will be a little bit familiar with some of the stuff that I'm going to cover today, but although during that presentation it was quite fast and uh, sort of very brief, uh, today we're going to go into a bit more detail on how we, how we customize some of our courses here. Um, so what I have here is this is a copy of one of our courses that we have on the Academy at the minute. Um, what I'm going to do is make some changes initially to the, the menu page to show you how you can make this a little bit more engaging for your learners um, and make some of the changes that you'll probably want to make whenever you, uh, for, for example, if you take a course from, from our catalog and you want to make some changes, these are probably some of the ones that you would want to, to do for your own courses. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to jump onto the builder. And what I want to make sure in this case is that we're using the correct theme for this. So in this case, we're going to use Salsa. Uh, which is already selected here. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're using the correct menu, which is the box menu. Uh, so the reason we want to make sure that we're using Salsa for the menu is that it's got some extra features uh, that we're going to make, make use of. And also, depending on the theme that you choose, the options that are available to you in theme customization will differ. Uh, so if you're following this again later on, you want to make sure you're using Salsa. Uh, so within theme customization, what that allows us to do is to basically define some properties that we can then make use of within the course. So for example, uh, <clears throat> maybe one of the first things that we would often do, uh, or that you might often do whenever you're uh, repurposing a course would be to change the branding at the top. So in this case, we have our little learning pool logo that we want to change to something that say, for example, if you had your own logo, you want to upload that. So as default, this is set to use the learning pool logo. But we can change that by changing the use custom logo and setting that to true. And then we can go into our asset browser. And I have a few images tags here for today's uh, 
presentation. Um, now you can't actually see this because this is a white logo on a transparent background, but I'll select this logo. And we'll press done. And you'll see that the logo now that we're going to use instead of the Learnpool logo is, is now part of the theme customization. So if I preview this, uh, I save this first. And then I'll preview. So obviously previewing takes a little bit of time. Uh, this is why we sort of trimmed this down a little bit for Learnable Live that we try to cut out all the previews and have this yeah. all pre-built, but you're going to see this all actually built in real time today. So bear with us whenever we have a few little moments. One of the questions, Paul, um, that we have received already, is it truly responsive? Yes. The outfit? Every, yes, everything from that is truly responsive. Uh, I have a little example here. Uh, so this is a course that you can actually go and view today. It's live to view. This is um, uh, one of our sort of our showcase courses. Everything you need to know about ADAPT. Uh, if you go to www.learnpool.com, uh, you'll be able to view this course yourself. And you can view this on mobiles or desktops or anything you want. And you can, you know, you can resize this on your desktop or you can view it straight on your phone. And you'll be able to see that no matter what device you show this on or, or view this on, that it'll actually it'll work as yeah. expected. And I can go to the pages here as well. Good stuff. Thank for you. Example. Uh, okay. You see that all works fine. Um, so let's just go back to our builder and our preview should have built. So now you can see we've got our, our little logo in place. Uh, and the next thing that we're going to look at is uh, the, the background menu image itself. So the background menu image is usually a pretty big part of you know all the, the, the menu images or the menu the menus of courses uh, where it's you know used to obviously give you maybe a tone or sort of set up uh, a bit of context for the course uh, and often when you see a standard course it's usually just confined to the top area of the menu but we can actually extend that all the way to the bottom uh, and to give us a little bit of a different feel so how we do that is again we go back into theme customization and we want to look at the backgrounds tab here at the bottom and Oh, actually, no, sorry, not the background tab, tab, the menu tab. So you can see that at the minute we already have one image in there, which is the image that we can see here at the top of the menu. Uh, but we can also add in a second image at the bottom here. So we've got menu background top image, menu background, menu bottom background image. Uh, I'll select an asset again from some of the assets that I have set up today uh, and so here's our menu bottom image and I'll select that and I'll okay that and then we will preview this Let's save that and preview good stuff and can you copy or and paste content from one page and adapt into another page at the minute oh. you can't so you whenever it's it's basically a limitation at the moment where you can, within a page, you can copy, say, for example, one article or sorry, one component between articles within a page. Okay. But actually copying from, you know, a, for example, a component from page one to page three just doesn't work at the moment. It's not something that's supported. It is something that is in the pipeline and should be uh, hopefully coming soon. Great. So keep your eye on learningpool.com for further news of that, folks. Okay. And this should be preview should be ready here. Soon, maybe, yes. Okay, so now you can see that having added the second, having added the second image, uh, the menu now extends all the way to the bottom of the page. Uh, this just gives us like a, a bit more something a bit more visually engaging. Okay, so the next thing that we can do uh, is maybe make some changes to the the menu banner area, which is this area across the top, which usually contains. The, the, the course title and a short description of the course. Uh, so we have some options available to us to customize this a little bit. So if I go back into the builder and back into theme customization, and in this case, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom to new features. And what we can do is we can make a few changes here where we will change the banner width to 75% and we will change the opacity of the menu banner to 100%. And we'll save that and we'll preview that.
And Paul, what are the main advantages of your the top three advantages of using adapt learning to create e-learning over kind of your experience of previous authoring tools? I think probably well, I mean, one of the main ones is that you're you're always just creating, you know, you're creating one course for every environment. So no matter what you create, you will work on desktops, mobiles, tablets. Uh, I think that's probably the, the main one. Uh, I think that for us as a design, the designers here, I think we've just got much more flexibility over the actual, the, the control we have over the visual presentation. So we, you know, whereas before with the old author until, for example, we, you know, we were really just creating graphics that complemented maybe individual pieces of content, but now we're creating much more sort of broader themes that, mm. that sort of create a much more sort of visually appealing look for the whole course in itself. Um, okay, so now if I go back into the course, <clears throat> and we can see now that the preview shows us that the menu banner itself is now is where it was full width is now 75% uh, across, and we've made it completely opaque. Uh, so you use a little bit of control over that as well. You know, if you have maybe some issues with uh, maybe legibility between the image and the background, you do have the option of making this completely solid to make your 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 copy here you know a lot more readable. Um, but that usually depends on the image that you use. Um, okay, so that's kind of you know us for the menu at the minute. Um, okay, I think we could maybe go back to Lisa for another poll. Okay. Thanks, Paul. So what we have here is just to get a feel from our delegates how they see adapt learning helping you. Um, is it to create the beautiful content that Paul has just demonstrated, or the content that it's easier for the learner to navigate and use? And as Paul's mentioned, because with Adapt, you just have to create that content once that works upon laptops, Android devices, um, iOS. So it's saving time uh, for you as an e-learning content creator, or maybe it is all of the above. So we'll just give that another few seconds. Thank you for everyone who's voted so far. <laughs> All <the above. laughs> What's your uh, thoughts on that, Paul? I think that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, so I think uh, so. Everybody really wants to do everything, which is good. Um, I think that in terms of creating beautiful content, I think that you know, the, this this even just you know with a few tweaks in the builder, or even just using the standard options that are there, you know, adding on graphics to the back of menus and pages, is a is a really easy way that you know to make your your content look really great and really good. You know, it's just about making some good decisions around the images that you use. Um, we did a previous webinar a few months back as well, which I think is still available on yes. the academy. That you can get some more information on, you know, where to find images and and uh, you know, uh, free resources that you can use to find them and, and prepare them for your courses. Um, in terms of delivering easy content, it's easy to navigate. I think that clearly adapted the minute, you know, is is really easy to use. And and on the front end, you know, that we try to create some really good simple menus that are that are that are, you know, very I guess easy to navigate, but we're also you know constantly working on sort of new versions of that and updating those, uh, and that's always something that we're going to be pushing forward on as well. Uh, so do you have to have do you have to be any type of technical experience, or is it for is it a easy for people to grasp? I think anyone anyone content? anyone can use it. I think you know to get to get yourself set up and with a course either you either repurposing a course that exists or building a course from scratch. It's 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 really simple to do. I don't really think it takes that much, you know, even training to do it. A lot of it's very intuitive, I find. Okay. Um, and but then if you know if you do want to spend a bit more time and sort of put a bit more, you know, a bit more focus maybe on the graphics once you've got your content done, once that's really solid, and you just want to complement that or support that a bit better, then you can make some take some extra steps to sort of improve that as well. Absolutely. As Paul's mentioned, we have done webinars before, um, and we have record those recordings on our YouTube channel, which I'll share with. All our delegates. So they talk about building an adapt course, theming it, and then finally publishing. So um, you're welcome to use those links to give you an insight on how easy it is to use adapt. Then, did you have anything to add to those poll results? No, I think Paul's covered most of it. So I think that's fine. Good stuff. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Back to you, Paul. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the next, well, two things I'm going to do next. I am. We are going to cover a little bit about styling an internal page on the course. 
Uh, but I just want to pick up on something first that I had a conversation with Lee Williamson from Lambeth during Learn to Pull Live, and he was telling me about his pains uh, to set the, the hot graphic pens on a course. And because he had, I think the example he showed me had about 10 different pens and he had to go into the builder and manually set the, the code, for example, uh, let's see, we're on page three here. So I just jump onto page three. Uh, that's the first graphic, right? Yeah. So I have on the course, I have a, a hot graphic here that has two pens. And in the builder at the back end, I also have the two the hot graphic setup and here's your your area where you define the first pen and area where you define the second pen. So normally what you would do is you would go in and you would put in a, a, a top position and a left position and preview it and then check to see if it's right or wrong. And so, so you would often be going in here checking your preview and you know making these little incremental changes or to the, the pen. And it would take a long time to basically set set up each individual pen. Uh, but so what we do here, and uh, now this is a, this is a, this is a little bit of a trick that's outside of the builder. Uh, but you should be able to do this with pretty much any browser. I'm using Firefox here at the minute, but you should be able to do this in Chrome or IE or any other browser that you, you have. Uh, and what we do is in the previewed course, we'll go to the hot graphic itself, and we will mouse over the the pen, and we'll right click on the pen, and we will press Inspect Element. Now. The first thing you're going to be thinking of, this looks really complicated, but it's not. So what this does is it gives us another window below our main window. And you'll see that the actual uh, part that's highlighted is the actual pen that we've just selected. So, you know, that should be all good. And you'll see over here on the right, we also get a few values, which is our top and left coordinates, essentially, of that pen. So what I can do here on this on the inspector, I can actually change the values here. And you'll see, as I do that, it actually moves the pen in place on the actual hot graphic itself. Now, if I press my up and down arrows, it'll move that by 1%. If I move that, if I press shift and up and down, it'll move it by 10% at a time. So you can, let me just reset that to zero. So you can, you know, you can fine tune that or, or make it jump about as you need. So I'm going to set that for our, by pressing shift and my up arrow, I'm going to set that to 10%. So that shifts the, the, the pen down. And then from the top, and then on the value below that, I'm going to do the same. And I'm going to press shift and up. And that will shift it in by 10. And we will not make that so much. Make that so much. I will just sort of shift that back to about, uh, yeah, let's say three there. And then below that, if I start moving down here, you can see that I'm now highlighting the second pen. And I can also make similar adjustments. Pete's that. just asking, Paul, can you explain what a, what a pin is? A pin. So a pin is on a hot graphic. Uh, a pin is essentially a point that you can define on an image that once you once the, the learner clicks on that, will pop up and, and give the learner some either feedback or, or additional information. Okay. Uh, so if I shift this over here, again, by just just in these values. So now the two values that I'm left with, 10 and 5, 5, are the two values that I should now put into, uh, sorry, I'm, let me just close this. So are the two values that I'll now to put into the actual pin position and the builder. So if I put 10 here and 55 here, and I okay that. I'll save that and I'll preview that. So now if I go back into that page, let me just close this. And the course is launched again. So you'll see now that our actual pen has been placed at the exact value we were able to find from the browser itself. Uh, and then, as you say, once you actually click on the pen, you get this additional information, which you can also define in the builder. Um, OK. so. Obviously, that's you know this is probably something you'll maybe need to watch the recording again just to get up you know maybe try that a few times. It's a little uh, takes a little bit to get used to, but once you once you get it, I think you'll find that it's really useful, particularly with the hot graphics that have lots of different pens. So we'll go back now to uh, the 
internal page that we want to style. And <clears throat> so normally uh, a, a, a standard page with, without any styling usually takes a color from your, uh, I think usually the sector color, and you know that'll be all the way through to the bottom of the page and it'll have a background, basically a blank background. But normally what we would do for each course is we usually add an image on the back of each page. Um, we'll often change the color of the components throughout the page. So the, uh, how we'll do that to begin with is we'll go back to our course structure uh, and let's just take a look at theme customization. Uh, so what we want to do is in the builder, uh, if we go to backgrounds, you can see that, uh, let me just run up here, yeah, backgrounds. So we have um, we have some, some colors defined here. Uh, so every time you define a color, for example, from background one to background 12, they're all given a class that you can then use in different parts of the course. So you could apply this to a page, or you could apply it to an article, or you could apply it to a block or a component, and it will then pull that color or image into that area of the, the course. Uh, so here we've got some color set up, and the one we were gonna look at at the minute is background color two. And further down the page, you'll see that we also have some uh, background images set up, and they also get classes as well. So we have the background image two. So background color two and background image two, we want to use that uh, in the background of the page here and on the components. So to do that, I'm going to go into the, the settings of page two. I'm going to edit that. And near the bottom here, we have a, a setting section. And in, in the setting section, we have uh, a, an input field for classes. So this is where we want to add our class from uh, background image two and background color two. So if I type in here, uh, background image two, sorry, two, uh, space, and background color two. It's very important that you make sure you, you get this exactly right. So it's background hyphen image two and background hyphen color two. And if I save that, and we'll preview that. You should see that this should update the background of our page with an image and also update the color of the components with the color uh, from background color two. I'm gonna preview in word here. Yeah, it was a bit quick. It's fast that time. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you see we've now added a background image to the entire page and background color two has also been applied to all the components within that page. So beyond that, uh, you know, there's a few other things that we can do. Often uh, we will try and break up a page so that it's not necessarily always having the same image from top to bottom. Uh, one of the ways that we'll do that is often to add a solid color to the back of maybe every other article on a page or, you know, just to kind of break that up uh, so it just it kind of helps that you know maybe make the the, the content maybe a little bit more digestible. Um, so how we would do that is we would go back into the builder. Uh, now we want to actually go into the page itself. So before we were working on the actual course structure, we want to go into the page and we can see all our our articles that make up that page too. And I want to go to so I want to go to article two and I want to add a yeah, article two, which is this article with the, the narrative on it. And I want to add a background color here uh, to basically sort of block, block out the, the image in the background. Uh, so to do that, I will go back into the builder and I'm in page two and I will go to uh, article two and in the settings of that article, we want to edit that. And again, we're going to use our classes, which again is we're going to use background <coughs> color two, and we'll save that, and we'll preview that. Hopefully there's a, bit, a quick preview, yeah, great. Uh, and if we go back into the page, and you'll see now that our first article is as it was, and our second article now has the color on the background. So a reason we would often do this as well is sometimes you might have some image in the foreground or in the content that maybe is a little, you know, if you have an image in the background as well, it might be a little distracting, so you might want to isolate that a little bit by adding a color there. Um, 
Another thing that we can do is, uh, as well as adding in a solid color, we can also add additional images to articles that can allow us to build up some interesting effects on the actual page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another image over the top of the image that we currently have here on the back of the page uh, to this particular article, and I'll uh, well, show you that will be a nice little treatment uh, that adds a bit of extra flourish to the page. So again, back into the builder. And I'm just going to quickly jump back into theme customization and look at our background images. Uh, so we have we have background image two, which is the image that we're currently using on the page. Uh, we also have another image, background image six, which is basically the same image. Uh, but if you look at it closely, there's a little bit of a variation on. So this is the background image that we're using on the page. And this is the background image that we're, we're, all, we're going to apply to the article. Uh, and you'll see there's a little, little sort of pinstriping effect on the side. So if I go back into the builder, and so we know the class for this is background image six, so we want to keep that in mind. And we'll go into page two, which is page two here, and we'll go to the component that we want to add that image to, sorry, the article that we want to add that image to, which is this article here. And I'll edit that. And then we will add in background image six here, and we'll save that. And then we'll preview this. This might take a little bit longer because it's an image preview. Oh, no, it's quick. That's great. Uh, and I'll go back into the page. And you see now if we scroll to the bottom, that because these images, so we've, we've added that, that image to the article background, and because that's overlaid on the original image, we now get this little interesting pinstriping effect as we scroll through the page. Now, obviously, this is this is nothing more than a visual flourish, but something that can you know you can add to your course just to give it a little bit more uh, zest. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Brilliant, Paul. Sounds and looks absolutely amazing. Um, I think testament that is that we've been completely flooded with yeah. the highest number of questions ever. Um, and due to time, we may not be able to answer them all live in this morning session. But I can assure that anyone who has sent a question in that we don't get to, we will follow up. What we'll do is we'll actually summarize everyone's questions from today's session because people may be asking questions that maybe you didn't think of to ask or you'd be interested in the answer and we'll share that with all the delegates. But we'll do your best to answer the many that have come in. Um, and Cara McConway, our Adapt Learning Graphic Experience Designer, is going to join us in the Q&A session too. Um, Cara, this may be one for you. Um, where off-the-shelf content is available, how easy it was the tools to make changes, especially branding and graphical ones? It's very easy. Um, it's very easy to make changes to courses that we've already created. Um, as Paul's demonstrated already in his webinar, um, this is an existing course and how easy it is to change colours, change logos, um, change the content. So that's kind of our aim within ADAPT is to make it yeah. adapt. I, th I think it's worth as well. The course that we worked on today was just a copy of one of our, our own catalogue courses. So you could easily make a copy of any of those courses. And, you know, make a copy, go into the theme customizations, make some changes, see what happens. It's, you know, it's, it'll, yeah. it'll help you understand it a bit better. There's nothing, you can't break anything really. So go for it. Right. Laura is asking, what size would you recommend for background images? Uh, so at the minute, on we have two different sizes that we use on our background images for our menu. They're, they are usually 2,000 pixels wide by 800 pixels tall. Okay. And on our pages, they are 2,000 pixels wide by 1,440 tall. Um, so and that's 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 kind of you know they can be larger or smaller than that but that's sort of the standard that we work because you know we all kind of work with that size and we all know that we can we just turn them out quickly because we all keep it standardized uh on the last webinar that we did um what's in a theme we did go into detail on how to create images and the sizes that you should be using for that so if you want to take a look at that as well mm -hmm. um there's you know a good 40 minutes worth of uh, detail on that okay I'll share, yeah. the, I'll share that link. Is a, there's been a good lot of questions in terms of sizes of logos, 
um, graphics. So I think definitely following up on sizes is a good idea. Yeah, on logos themselves. So the logo that we have here, um, you know, this is the, the space from the top to the bottom of this uh, the menu area is 60 pixels. Uh, the actual logo itself, so the, the image that is uploaded is 60 pixels top to bottom. Uh, but there's a, obviously a little bit of padding at the top and the bottom, which you should sort of try and keep in mind. So you don't want the, the logo to be right from the top to the very bottom. So you'd have a 60 pixel high image, but the actual logo inside that might be like 40 pixels or 30 pixels tall. Okay. Nancy, this is one possibly for you. Um, can courses be built? Can courses built and adapt be deployed over other platforms? That one's from Pete Fillard, um that are SCORM compatible. Yeah, absolutely. They are SCORM 1.2 compatible. Um, currently, we're also looking to bring in um, Tim Can X API. So, um, obviously, that will give us more features that we can use going forward as as well. But yeah, when you do your publish, it outputs a SCORM 1.2 zip file that can go onto any learning management system. Brilliant, great stuff. Um, and what about can they can they adapt Simple Build to create multiple choice quizzes? And when these are deployed, does Codera allow the reporting of the yeah that's sorry yeah I think you're asking about the um, whether you can make assessments um, in adapt it you can is the answer to that uh, we are currently testing it um, and we're also looking at doing we can probably will likely do a webinar on how you do that because there's a lot within the assessment in ADAPT um, and what we're finding is that because there's so many options um, it might be slightly complicated for people to do so we're just making sure that we've got the training materials ready um, for everyone before we release that fully but you can make multiple choice um, assessments you can do select from list as well to so have more than one option um, you can use a number of different questions but <clears throat> you can also have question banks and you can randomize from the question banks which ones get pulled out so it's quite a sophisticated system. As I said, we're just working our way through it, and we'll be doing some um, Captivate videos that show you that. But it's, we can probably also do um, some webinars to help people get up to speed, and we're hoping that will be released in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. In terms of um, how it links into Totara and, I mean, any LMS, really, um, SCORM doesn't have the capacity to be able to give you um, question by question feedback. So if you're publishing a SCORM 1.2 onto a SCORM um, LMS, then you won't have that functionality. Um, my understanding is that XAPI does, um, and that's something that we're looking at in a lot more detail. So hopefully within the next kind of three to six months, we'll be able to give you more information on that. But we're really keen that you can have assessments within modules that you can track by question, because we know that it's something that's really important to our customers. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to tell you more about that soon. Sounds good, Lindsay. Thank you very much. Um, as Lindsay's kind of indicated, we have webinars and we do webinars in response to what our customers are, are looking to learn. So keep your eye on learningpool.com forward slash events for those webinars as they're published. Maybe one for you, Cara. Um, Jonathan Hughes is asking, can you add a colour to an individual block or component? Um, the answer to that is yes, Jonathan. This is one of the new features of Salsa where you can actually go and do your components um, individually and apply a class that allows you to change the colour of the block. Um, it's actually a really nice feature that us as designers are really liking at the moment. Um, I don't know if Paul can show you a quick yeah, so demo go. here. Uh, so, so, for example, on page two, we already set background colour too for all the... the the components. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could also take background color one. Yeah. Uh, I'll just copy that. Um, and we'll go jump back onto page two again. Uh, so, for example, if I wanted to change. Hmm? Apply it to a text one. Let's see, like this one here, maybe? Yeah, big yeah. Uh, So, what was that? It was article three. Yeah, so Article 3, and if I go into the, the, on the, the text component itself, <coughs> and I apply the, that background color one here and save that, and preview that. This takes a long time to preview. <laughs> <laughs> when you change a color, or an image, you'll find it takes a little bit longer to preview. Yeah. Okay. For that reason. 
it's just because it's you're uploading something for new. Change, yeah. yeah. Just what else loading the Megan from RCP has just asked, what program do you use to edit images with the fancy pinstripe or polka dot? Oh uh, yeah. So we well here in the office we'd have, we've been using obviously Photoshop or Illustrator, but there is other free uh, tools that you can use. Um, we would recommend um, a piece of software called Pixlr, which is spelled P-I-X-L-R, uh, and you can go to pixlr.com. Again, that's something that we covered in our previous webinar on, mm -hmm. on creating graphics, and you could uh, there's tutorials available for that. Um, and so if you look at the old, the old, the old um, webinar, you should get some a bit more information on that, and maybe that will be something that we'll probably cover maybe in a, an up-and-coming uh, webinar as well. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. I said, I'll share a link to those past ADAPT learning webinars yeah. so you can uh, get a flavour of what Lindsay and Karen and Paul have covered in the past. Oh, okay, so this doesn't work. <laughs> Did I preview that? Okay. okay. Right, okay, we seem to be having an issue with the plan of that colour there. Um, Okay. So on the link to that, Paul, and Sarah Kelly has asked when we covered marker pins. People typically love the marker pins on the hot graphics. Mm -hmm. So Sarah has asked, are the marker pins customizable? At Can you change color or? The, well, so they, they do draw color from the, the theme customization settings. I think it's the sector colors or something. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you, other than that, you can't really change them. So I wouldn't. There's no, we can't change, the, for example, that we are doing some work around maybe making different types of pins available to you, uh, but at the moment it's kind of limited to what's there. Okay, that's good. Michelle's has commented um, about the fantastic shortcuts you gave for hot graphics. She confesses that she's been avoiding them because of how frustrating they were, not any more. Yeah, so. that's actually going to get easier as well. Um, so this, the, the tricks that I was showing you as we've been using in, in the office for a while, but they are working on an actual proper interface for the builder that will allow you to define those much easier than that. You know, so you won't have to go into the, the, the browser and use the inspect. You'll be able to actually pick the point on the image uh, within the builder itself. Are there any plans to make those pins resizable, Paul? Uh, at the moment, I don't know, but that could be something that we could put forward as a, a suggestion. There's, you know, there, there will be options around that at some point in the future. Okay. So Stevie has asked, um, can you change the fonts on the menu page, Karen? Yes, the answer to that is Stevie. There is um, within theme customization. If you scroll down, you'll find a font section. Um, there's a few fonts within there that you can change. You can, can you, Paul, upload new fonts? So you can, uh, let's just take a look at the fonts here. So this is the fonts and the customization. Uh, you can only use Google fonts which is our only restriction, but there's a lot of Google fonts available. Um, there are a few fonts that are built into the, the builder itself, and so you can select from any of these. Uh, but if you want, you can use a custom font. Again, obviously this has to be a Google font, but you can set this to true. And then you can go into Google fonts. Uh, let's see. And let's pick. Let me see, where's the details? Uh, let's just find some font here. Okay. Lindsay, I see you've answered uh, Stevie's question. Maybe the rest of the delegates would be interested to know the answer. So Stevie has asked, yeah. can we change the number of pages by dragging them up and down as you can with the articles, blocks, and components within the page? Yeah, you can, absolutely. I think I've tried to reply to um, Stevie, actually, just before I go into that. Apologies to those of you that we haven't given answers to. Um, we will come back to you. It's obviously quite difficult to run the webinar and type um, responses at the same time. So we've done a few, but not all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, so the way that you can move the pages around is go to where you've got your page list. Um, I'm sure Paul can probably show you this um, in a minute, but you know where your, your pages are laid out, so your kind of sections, you can see them all at a glance in the builder. Um, and then 
you can literally just hover over the top of each of those blocks and the it turns into a move icon. You can probably see that there and then you can pick that up and you can just move it to wherever you need it to go. So it's very simple to, to move things around. Um, I think Stevie had another question which was to do with can you make um, full width components in half width ones? Um, and again, that works in a very similar way. The way that I tend to do it is to create a new block underneath. And then if you pick up your component in the same way that Paul's just showed you with the pages, you get the move icon again. Um, and when you drag it into the new block, it gives you the option of putting it full width or um, half width left hand side or half width right hand side. There you go, Paul's showing you now. So you get these little red areas and you can choose where you drop it in. And then if you've emptied that block, you can just delete it out basically so that it's obviously not, not sitting there empty because that will stop it previewing. Okay, uh, and just back to the, the question on fonts. Um, so, you know, once you've, you can, so you can use some of the built on Google fonts that are available, but you can also set your use custom font to true. And any Google font that you can find in Google fonts, all you need to do is copy the full name and paste that into, you know, the section for headers or the section for body and preview that and you know, the font should, should appear. Great stuff. Okay. Um, we're just quickly run out of time and we haven't got to all the questions. Like, like I said, what, I will, what I'll do is I'll collate all those questions and get the team here to answer those and then share them with all our registrants from today. So I'm just going to pass you over to Lindsay for one quick moment. That should be you, Lindsay. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, so I think all that remains to say really is thank you kind of to everyone for attending. We hope you found it useful. Um, as we said, we know that some of the thing kind stuff can seem a little um, tricky when you haven't done it before but hopefully having seen it be done you you can see how easy it is once you get get stuck into it so um, and also as I alluded to earlier do let us know if there's anything in particular that you would like webinar sessions on we're very happy to run them particularly the practical sessions where it's just a question of us kind of talking through how to do particular things um, I know that some of you have put some of that in, in the question area already so we'll look at setting some of those up for you Fantastic. So that's all thanks very much everyone yeah. So just to flag, folks, before we wrap up, just a few things to make you aware of. A link to a recording of this webinar and any accompanying resources will be hitting your inbox over the next couple of days as a follow-up to today's session. Um, and whenever the webinar closes, there will be a short survey that will pop up in the middle of your screen. Um, if you could just take 30 seconds and complete that, because we do really value the, the feedback of our webinar attendees, because it does help shape the webinar schedule going into the remainder of 2015 and our plans for 2016. Um, as we flagged during the session, we do have a library of ADAPT sessions on our YouTube channel and as part of the follow-up, I'll be sharing a link to that playlist to show you how to build, theme and publish in ADAPT. I will also have Lindsay and Paul's recording from Learning for Live available shortly, so we'll share that too. So keep your eye on um, our, events, our events page on learningpool.com for future webinars. Um, so all that remains is to thank you on behalf of Lindsay, Paul, Cara and myself for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.